Now, this actually came up to uh, in a boat, and apparently the early Gallic warriors did win. Now, I had a video uh, in the past that I wanted to redo. For one, I kind of had uh, insufficient equipment and such, so yeah. Now, this type of equipment that we're using is that of the early Gallic warriors from the uh, somewhere between the 5th to the 3rd century BC. And in such, the Gallic warriors, pretty much from the old Hallstatt culture, would have still been wearing, uh, wearing their type of armor known as the Hallstatt soft armor. Now, what is the Hallstatt soft armor? Simple, it might actually be gambeson, and some historians actually state that it might have even been covered in leather. So, many people also uh, ask though, simple art, then why haven't we not seen any examples of this in archaeology? Well, simple, this is cloth and leather we're talking about. It, decays real quickly compared to metal. Uh, the equipment that they were known to have used would be pretty much as follows, the Halstead soft body armor, and in such, uh, those that could afford it, like the co like pretty much from the common class to the middle class, they would have been afford, could afford this type of equipment. Now, uh, it is stated that the most common of warriors would have just had their soft body armor, a shield, spear, javelin, and probably even a short sword or a long dagger. Uh, those that could actually afford it would even afford the helmet. For one, this type of helmet though is not exactly uh, of the most earliest design. This would have actually been coming around sometime during the 3rd century BC. And in such, during this point in time period, uh, this would be the most common of helmets. Well, the more richer class would actually afford a protruding helm design like this. Yeah, that looks weird, but here's the thing. I, every time I look at this, I'm always thinking of a pinhead for some reason. Uh, so, many questions do come up about this. Templar, why would they wear those? Simple, to deflect a blow to the head by pretty much glancing it to one end or the other. Now, it is stated, though, that the early... Uh, Gallic warriors would have actually fought with this light armor. And in fact, the Romans later learned to fear and despise them, especially what happened at the Battle of Alia and as well the Siege of Rome. Rome lost hundreds of men, mainly using their old Hulsh uh, type of form of mation, uh, near identical to the Hellenistic uh, Greeks. So this gives us a good example. So maybe you might ask though, okay Templar, uh, how quickly and efficiently did the Gauls move? Well, it's stated that their formation of warfare would be like that of a pitzer maneuver. In fact, their front line, for example, their first line of military formation would be somewhat like a shield wall formation, interlocking shields of oval-like shields like this, and as which, from the flanks, they would actually attack their opponents. Kind of like how the Romans later adopted the said, well, type of tactic to defeat the said Carthaginians at the Battle of Zama. Uh, so, why did the Gauls use it? Simple. It was easy to defeat a heavier equipped formation in which the said <laughs> Romans were what you might call uh, old fashioned looking, meaning they looked near identical to the Greeks, the Hopolite, the Greek Hopolite. They did not look, always look like well, this, the Roman legionnaire, they originally looked like, well, a Greek, uh, said, well, Greek hopolite. Now, in fact, the Romans would later learn from their mistake at the Battle of Alia and the Siege of Rome and 
would develop their army to counterattack against the said Gauls. And the fact is, their equipment would nearly rival that of the Gauls. In fact, it's stated that the Romans actually equipped themselves with tower shields, as well as short stabbing swords, and as well as some near identical helmets. Uh, though, those middle class Gauls that could afford it, though, would also afford this a Latin style sword. Uh, there are different models and different type of cases. Uh, so, why is it that it's well covered in metal? Simple. The sheath was covered in metal, but originally it's covered in wood, and then they covered it in metal if they could afford it, and it increases over time. But majority of the Gauls, as I said, would have this, a small stabbing sword, which still looks long enough to be perfect. That's because the way the Gauls would have fought would have been near identical to that of the Roman legionnaire, a phalanx, or in this case, a uh, type of shield wall formation, locking shields, stabbing through the gaps, and which, this is kind of horrifying for the said Roman. Now though, many people might ask, Templar, what type of body armor would the Hallstatt soft armor be made out of? Simple, it would have been made out of cloth or leather mostly. Some people even state that it might have been covered in leather, I don't know, but that's for our best understanding. Uh, now people do want to know uh, in major information though, is what about the helmets? Were they all universal? No. Majority of Gauls did not wear helmets because of their class, such as the most common of them probably just had a bare head, while the majority, uh, or said, of them would have also uh, pretty much had used spears and a javelin rather than using a sword, because one, it was a rarity. So, yeah, pretty much, how about enough talking, and let's get right into it, shall we?
that little uh, charging and all that. As y'all saw, I was removing each part of my armor each time for one major reason. I wanted y'all to see on what the Gauls would have looked like, especially with different type of class systems. Now, as y'all can understand, Gauls would have fought like this. They would have fought in unison formation to defeat their opponents. And as you can understand, wearing this stuff is kind of heavy. Uh, now, did all the Gauls wear the same type of oval type shield? That's hard to say, really. However, Gallic cavalry, uh, or Cal Gallic uh, cavalrymen, or whatever you want to pronounce them, actually had a small round shield, not this oval shield. Reasons are probably obvious. They actually had to charge into battle and throw their spear. And the fact is, they didn't want the shield hitting them and then the leg. So that could be a good example of it. Uh, but now, many people do ask, though, the Templar, uh, when it comes down to it, how would this equipment be used and such? Well, as you can see, I'm a light foot. I'm, this is not fatiguing me. Well, except for the weather, because remember, we're slightly still in March, and it is kind of still hot outside. It's getting hotter and hotter right now during the springtime and summertime. So I don't know if this armor would have been, uh, well, worn all day and such. But you can understand why the Gauls would have probably worn this stuff to probably keep out the said weapons. And in fact, is, I feel extremely light, I feel extremely mobile, which we can see why the Romans copied from the Gauls in order to defeat them later on, especially in northern Italy. Uh, the Gauls themselves, the early Gauls, were so ferocious, in fact, Romans actually feared them and even stated that they could actually bite through iron. I don't know if that's true or not, seeing the fact that this might be just a Roman myth that was conducted. The same like these idiot myths about the Celts uh, being, well, bare but naked. That is actually a myth. It was more of like a tribal dance, if you think about it, and in such. The Celts were stated to have done tribal dancing and such to uh, get the gods to notice. But there were a couple of champion Gauls. The reason I say champion Gauls is because they were different compared to the other type of Celts. In fact, the champion Gauls, or champion Celt, whatever you want to pronounce it as, would actually be having little armor. Actually, he might not even wear any body armor. And he might not even wear his tunic. He might just be bare-chested. So, merely naked, as the Romans stated. But in such... It could be understandable that's how people did understand what the term naked meant. But the thing is, that doesn't mean he was bare butt naked. He might have been covered in tattoos that uh, protected him. It goes on out, on off every few centuries. But we can see why the Romans were stated to have feared these ancient warriors so much that they never wanted to face them in battle. But Hopefully you like this video, y'all. Like and subscribe for more. If y'all have any ideas for another how-to video, let me know down in the comments below. I will leave a links for y'all. If any of y'all want to uh, see my other Celtic videos, uh, that of which I have covered. And as well, if any of y'all want to see any other videos that of which, uh, on the equipment I covered, I will also leave links down below for in the description for y'all. So that way, y'all can actually see them yourselves. But anyways, guys, hopefully you like this video. Like and subscribe for more. And hopefully see y'all in the next one. Have a great day. Mm hmm.